What is going on, Crimson City? My name is Crimson Seabed, and today's video, guys, we are here with our week one battle in the GBA against Chris, aka Monotui, and the Tampa Bay Lux Rays. You guys are excited. Be sure to leave a like on the video. It shows me you guys are digging these GBA uploads. I am excited for this season. I'm excited to come back. I think we've got a really good team built up against Chris. As always, make sure you check out his channel. It'll be in the description for his side of the battle as well. If you guys didn't catch the team builder, that will also be in the description of this video. Make sure you go check that out in case you don't know what we're bringing and why we're bringing it. Long story short, we are bringing Cobalion, Tornadus, Crocodile, Magneton, Serena, and Curum. Uh, Chris is bringing Alolan Golem, Mantine, Greninja, Jirachi, Buzzwole, and Zygarde. So, uh, four out of the six Mons I thought he would bring. I anticipated him to bring Greninja, Jirachi, Buzzwole, and Zygarde. Um, I thought Miltank and Florgis would be coming for sure, but um, after talking post-match, I did see why he decided to bring Mantine over Miltank. Um, Mantine is super bulky, got a got a good size buff in Gen 7. And then Alolan Golem was actually a very interesting pick. So without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and kick this off. Looking at his team, um, nothing really wanted to switch in on Cobalion except for Mantine. I didn't expect him to lead with Mantine, so I wanted to lead right out of the gate with Cobalion. Worst case scenario, if he decides to switch out, I can get up my rocks. There's that shiny blue Super War line that I love so very much. And he leads off with his Alolan Golem. And now I'm sitting here thinking to myself, well... I do have Sugar Bear if he has Earthquake. I'm just going to go straight in for a close combat. I'm like, I'm just, I, I don't see a reason not to just click the obvious move. So we actually pop the Chapel Berry turn one. We are able to bring that thing down to about two thirds of its health, about 55, 60% of its health. Um, obviously get our defense jobs. If he goes for an EQ, uh, we can definitely take that with the Shooka, but he sets up his own rocks. Very good move because I do have two Mons that are weak to rocks. Um, but I do have a spinner in the form of Serena, so I'm not worried about that. I'm like, you know what? I can just go for close combat one more time. Why not? He decides to switch out. Switches into Buzzwole. Now, this gives me two things in mind. Uh, Cobalion does get Aerial Ace, so he's either a Cobalberry Berry set, or he knows he's going to be able to outspeed me and punish me. So, I decided to take the risk. I'm not carrying Aerial Ace. I don't want to call his bluff. I'm going to switch out here. I'm going to go out into Tornadus. Tornadus can regenerate off any damage that he has, that he wants to do. We are going to take rocks, unfortunately, and we're going to see the Buzzwool go for superpower. So I'm assuming right now that he's Scarfed. Um, I don't want to go for a U-turn because if he is Scarfed, he's going to knock me out. So I'm just going to hard switch out of here. And he actually withdraws as well, and he withdraws first. So that does, in fact, confirm that he is Scarfed. He is faster than me. Uh, he's going to withdraw into his Mantine which is not the world's best scenario for me if he is running Air Slash, but I switch into Serena, aka Cosmo Queen here. I'm going to be able to start stacking some screens. I ended up going with the leftover sets. Hindsight 2020, I should have went with um, with the screens because leftovers, while the little recovery is good, it wasn't necessarily crucial in this match as an extra turn or two of the uh, screens would be. So he switches out of Mantine, goes out in a 0.3%, which is the Jirachi. And this thing is scary because it's his Z-Move Captain. I have no idea what he wants to do to me, but I know I can take an Air Slash. I'm going to be faster than Mantine. I can go for uh, Light Screen, nerf the damage from Air Slash to be able to set up either my Reflect, I can uh, Rapid Spin the Rocks away, I can go for a Trop Kick, which is a neutral hit on the Mantine, and it'll do some damage depending on the spread that he is. Goes for a Substitute. Great. If there's anything that I've learned in competitive format, it's that do not let something get behind a Substitute. It will end me. It will absolutely end me. So, I get the Reflect up because Jirachi can't do too much to me, even with Fire Punch with the Reflect up. I am a rather defensive set of Serena. Shout out to the analyst for <laughs> talking about the uh, offensive and defensive prowess of Serena. But, I'm going to switch out into Crocodilius here. Um, I can break this thing sub easily, either the knockoff or an earthquake. I don't think he has coverage to hit me, especially behind his sub. He goes for the Iron Head with the Reflect up. That's doing like more damage than I'd like it to. To be to be to be frank, I'll be frank and you be Sally. That is doing a bit more damage than I wanted to. Uh, he is carrying leftovers, as we can see. I don't know if I mentioned that before when he went behind the sub, but he's gonna keep going for Iron Head. Serene Grace is a pain in my butt. But um, I do want to break this thing sub. If he is some sort of calm mindset, I don't want him staying behind it. So I'm going to be able to knock off. I'm going to be able to break the substitute, obviously. Now here I can either uh, continue to knock off or I can go for an earthquake. I can see what he wants to do. Um, I'm anticipating Golem to kind of be a sag at this point because I don't think he wants to lose his leftovers. I don't think he wants Crocodilius being able to knock out his Jirachi. It's a really interesting set and we'll see that further in the battle. He does go into the Alolan Golem, so I'm going to be able to knock off. Obviously, we pop the thing's barrier, so it's not going to do too much. Um, he's not going to outspeed me in any way, shape, or form, so I am going to be able to just knock him out with an Earthquake, and that is the first uh, KO of the game, actually. So right now, we've got a 6-5 lead, which is uh, which is nice. Coming back, in the 6-5 lead, you know? It's nice. So, uh, Alolan Golem goes down, and now the uh, the Buzzwole, the Buzzwole is in, the Buzzwole is here. 
and I'm not really sure what to do with it at this point. I don't know what kind of set he's running. I'm assuming he's Scarf. I don't know what kind of coverage he has, but he brings this thing in so matter-of-factly all the time, and we do have the bait for it. We do have uh, the Choppleberry Kirim in the back, but I'm going to go out into my Serena. I can take a superpower if he goes for a lunge or he goes for a leech life. Rip. But he goes for the superpower. We're going to be able to tank one of those. After leftovers and after the uh, superpower drop, we will be able to take another one. So I'm going to be able to either set up screens again. I can go for a trap kick on the switch. I can also uh, rapid spin the rocks away as well. So a lot of things to do here. He is going to switch out. He does not want to take any sort of random move. Goes back out to the Jirachi because Serena is perfect setup fodder for the Jirachi. And I am going to be able to set up that Reflect one more time in case he does go back out in the Jirachi, which he does. It's going to be good news for me because we're not going to be able to... Um, so far, he's only revealed Iron Head as his way of physically attacking. So, uh, Colbaton's going to be able to take it on. Um, with the Reflect up, Crocodile's going to be able to take it on. We're not. This thing's not going to sit behind a sub. At this point, I don't know what type of set he is running. So, uh, he brings up the Substitute again. And I was like, what's more crucial here? Switching out on his anticipated sub or getting the Hazards away? I decided to get the Hazards out of the way. Golem's gone. He has nothing else to get up hazards. This is perfect. This is the opportune time. Rocks will no longer be on my side of the field. He has no spiker. He, um, unless he's got spikes or toxic spikes on the Greninja, he did not bring his Roserade. Pause for water. But, uh, looking at it, I can go right back out into Crocodile, or I can go out into Cobalion, which also, uh, can break this up, but I decided to go out into Crocodile again with that Reflect up. Um, I didn't want to go out into Cobalion just in case he had Zen Headbutt. Uh, he goes to the Iron Head, reflects up. Still doing, like, I don't know. I don't know if I'm comfortable with how much damage it's doing with the reflect up. It's crazy. Uh, the spread that he ends up having on this thing is actually kind of wild. Um, come to find out. So, we'll see more of his moves revealed as we go on. So, he keeps going for Iron Heads. He can he can win this battle. He can 1v1 me right now. He can flinch me to death. Uh, one of the fortunate parts about having Jirachi. And would you look at that? He flinches me. So, but that's part of that's part of Pokemon. Can't get, can't get mad about that. It's the game we play, um, as I always say. But... Uh, we're just going to stay in and kind of 1v1 this thing. I am going to switch out, though. I don't want to keep taking too much damage. I'm going to go out to Cobalion, because he hasn't revealed any other way of touching Cobalion. I've got a lot of defensive investment, and I've got to reflect up. So, I can kind of set up on this thing. We can see Iron Head there did 8. Did 8 HP. Uh, the Reflect's going to go away pretty soon. If it's not this turn, it's the next turn. But Cobalion can break the sub of the close combat. Um, So, that's no problem. There we go. The Reflect Warrior. I was about to say, I'm pretty sure that it's... Uh, Pretty sure that's going away. So we can go for close combat. Close combat is going to be able to break the substitute of the Jirachi, fortunately enough for us. And he is right here going to reveal, I believe, I believe, don't want to get ahead of myself, the defense, special defense drop. Uh, he reveals HP ground right here. So it's a good thing we had the Shookaberry, otherwise this would have actually, uh, after the special defense drop, would have uh, would have done some hefty, hefty damage. So, um, Pop Sugar, he's got no reason not to go for another HP ground, so I'm thinking, what's a free switch in into Jirachi? So like I said, this is an interesting set. He's shown Substitute, Iron Head, and HP ground. So he's a very, very niche set. I really like this set because it was designed to do like three things in general. So I'm going to switch out into my Tornadus. Um, he is going to go for the Hidden Power Ground. He was also a Magneton Trap. If I tried to trap him, he could turn around and HP ground me. So I'm going to go for the Heat Wave here. I'm hoping for the burn. Um, I do do about half. Goes for the Thunder Wave. So his entire set is Substitute, Iron Head, HP Ground, and Thunder Wave. This thing's job was to um, kill, uh, gosh diggity darn, Magneton. Do massive damage to Cobalion. Um, cripple some of my faster mons like Tornadus. Um, possibly even Cobalion. So I was like, I was really I was really impressed by the set once it, once it all panned out. So I'm going to switch back into my Cobalion right here. And uh, he's just going to go for the Iron Head. He's going to try to start flinching the, uh, the Tornadus down. So... Um, at this point right here, I think to myself, okay, he's at a little bit above half. I can go for two close combats, but the hidden power ground is going to knock me out after the special defense drop. So my best bet here is to set up a swords dance and go for a close combat. I'm going to get as much damage off in this thing as possible. He goes behind his sub. Bad news bears for me. He's going to stay in and go for the hidden power ground because I did not go for close combat getting the special defense drop. We are actually going to be able to live that, which is awesome. And now I'm a plus two Colt Balian. And now he's in a situation where he doesn't know what to switch in. Because like I said, I could be running Aerial Ace for the Buzzwall. I could predict the switch. So I'm going to go for close combat here. We are going to be able to knock out the Jirachi, which is awesome. So I believe we're at 6-4. And his Z Captain is down. He didn't have a Z move, obviously. But his, his the Captain of his team is down. One of the scarier mons on his team is gone. So uh, he goes out into Greninja. And uh, this is going to be Torrent Greninja, obviously. And come to find out, was I'm actually, you know what, I'm not even going to get ahead of myself. I'm not even going to get ahead of myself. Um, I don't want to stay in. Cobalion still is very useful. Um, I'm going to sack the Tornadus here because I, um, I I wanted to keep Cobalion around. I want to keep Cobalion. What did I want to keep Cobalion around for? There's there's one more Mon. There's one more Mon. Um, 
There's one more Pokemon that he has. What is it? What is it? What is it? What is it? I can't believe it. Zygarde. I want to keep Cobain around for Zygarde in case I get like a close combat off, get some damage off. So uh, he's going to go for Ice Beams. He's going to be able to knock out the Tornado. So now we're at 5-4. I'm going to go on to Valkyrie and the Magna Warrior right here. And I'm going to be able to get huge damage off on this thing, provided he doesn't have like Low Kick or he doesn't have um, a Volt Switch. So I was going to go for the HP Ice here, predicting the switch into Zygarde. But unfortunately, I go for the Electric move. I wanted to be safe. And this encounter right here is very interesting. We compared spreads after this. There was no way I should have lived this encounter. He goes for a thousand arrows. I'm running analytic. I live on two HP. I am not sturdy. I live on two HP. There's a 68.8% chance to Oko me with thousand arrows and I live it on two. I go for HP ice and with my spread, there was a 33.5% chance that I would Oko him in return. So that entire sequence of events right there was completely in my favor and I'm fortunate for that. Um, he's going to go back out into the buzz wall here. Now I'm like, wait a minute, Ma Valkyrie and the Magna Warrior is still in here. We're at 5-3. We got this. I want to keep this thing around for Mantine. So, I'm going to go out into Serena here. Uh, really, our, uh, really our defensive check to this thing. I still am waiting to bring in Kyurem cleanly. So, my sack for Serena here was pretty obvious in my opinion. Um, I I didn't know how he'd feel about my Kyurem coming in this early in the match. Or this at this point in the match against his Buzzwool. I am, like I said, if you didn't watch Team Builder, I am running Choppleberry. A lot of defense and HP flying to Oko the Buzzwool. So... He picks off this arena. He's going to get the uh, the uh, beast boost, but that is still going to bring him at minus one attack. So his beast boost goes off. I'm thinking perfect scenario to bring in my Kyurem because I can just go for HP flying. If he goes for a superpower, I can tank that every day, especially a minus one with the chopper berry. I can roost that off the next turn. It was absolutely no damage, but he withdraws with the uh, with the minus one attack. Goes on to Crikey, which is going to be the man time. I reveal the hidden power right here. And I wasn't sure. Now, at this point in the match, this is crucial right here because I revealed my Kyurem safely coming in against the Buzzwall, going for HP flying. I thought certainly he would pick up on the fact that this thing was bait. So, uh, I can pretty much 1v1 this man's hand right now. Um, I'm just going to go for Ice Beams. He can fire off Scalds. We're going to exchange blows for a few times. Um, I kind of want to pressure stall this thing a bit. I have a feeling this is going to be one of his, uh, one of his more specially defensive walls, as we can see by that damage. I am running a, uh, timid max speed Kyurem with, like I said, some defensive investments so we can take those superpowers. I'm just going to trade these ice beams. And in my mind at the time, I was like, let me get the freeze. Let me get the freeze. Let me get the freeze. Not remembering that Scald automatically thaws on the turn. So we're going to exchange these blows back and forth for a little bit. And it's going to happen at the end of the battle too. Um, we're going to be exchanging blows as well. But, uh, again, just trying to pressure stall him towards the end. That, that'll be another encounter, like I said. The two, they're, they're two just kind of go back and forth. I was debating. I was anticipating a roost, and I wanted to switch into Magneton so badly here. But I switched into Crocodile because I wanted to be able to knock this thing's leftovers off. Crocodile's pretty much defeated at this point. Goes for the Toxic. How awesome of a play would that have been had I gone into Magneton? I was thinking it. I was like, I totally going to Magneton. Just get a Volt Switch off on this thing. Knock it out. Get a Volt Switch off on something. Please, 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 please. But I did not, and it would have been the perfect play. He would have been at half health. Oh, my goodness. But goes with the Toxic. I'm going to get the knockoff with Crocodile here. Part of me should have went for the Z-Bulk up right here because nothing would have wanted to take a plus two knockoff. Um, I would have knocked off Buzzwold Scarf. I would have knocked off Greninja's Life Orb. I would have done a ton of damage to everything if I would have gone for the Z-Bulk up right there. That was another thing I was thinking. So a couple of misplays on my part, unfortunately. But we're still in this. It's 4-3 right now. He's going to withdraw Crikey, and he's going to go back out into Captain Ginyu. And I was debating... Um, just going for another knockoff here, going for the damage. Um, I decided to Z bulk up right here. Just style points. We've got a Z bulk up. There's a Z cat. There's a Z move crooked out in the thumbnail. But, uh, <laughs> um, anyways, as I was saying, I'm going to go for the Z bulk up right here. Like I said, style points don't really have anything to do with this. I'm just going to sack it, bring in something else safe. Um, right now I'm kind of thinking we're, we're, we're SOL. We're shit out of luck. I have no idea what to do right here. Um, I'm going to go into Kobayan, and this is absolutely crucial right here. Apparently, this is what I was talking about earlier. Apparently, his Greninja uh, was paced to outspeed base 100 Mons. I, I I was paced to outspeed base 100 Mons as well, but I outsped him, I guess, by a point. Um, because that's what he had sped characters for. I get, the, uh, I get the close combat off, and I was like, whoa, I didn't need to sag my Tornado so soon. That's crazy. I'm able to get that off. So again, I'm thinking to myself, I can sack my Cobalion, bring in my Kyurem, Oko this thing, and then clean up with Magneton on the Mantine. So I'm going to let this thing go down right here to the superpower. He's going to be right back up at where he was after the Beast Boost comes off, obviously. And I'm like, all right, another crucial point in the match. I have a Kyurem, and I reveal the HP flying against this Boswell very safely. 
I'm thinking to myself, he's going to hard switch into Mantine. I'm going to hard switch into my Magneton, and I'm going to go for a Volt Switch, bring back out my Kiram against this thing. So here, I hard switch out. I didn't play it safe how I should have and gone for my HP flying. I hard switch into Magneton, and he told me post-match that it was a 50-50 shot. He was debating switching into Mantine. He goes for the safe superpower, knocks out my Magneton, and I'm like, great. Now I pretty much have to 1v1 a Mantine with my Kiram, which is like I was alluding to earlier in the match. So... He gets his beast boost, obviously. He's staying right around the attack range that he needs to. Bring back in my Blue Eyes White Dragon. Blue Eyes White Dragon is doing exactly what it should have done two turns ago, which uh, inevitably would have actually won me the game. Was going for the HP flying, eat, taking that Chopel, taking that uh, taking that superpower very well. Look at that. We can roost off that damage against the Mantine, no problem. And we could have even uh, we could have even sacked the uh, the Kyurem to the uh, to the Mantine. And gone into our Magneton. But either way, uh, we eat the Chapel. We go for the HP Flying. We are able to Oko that thing. So ultimately, Kyurem did what it needed to do. Which I'm super thankful for. Shout out to the Blue Eyes White Dragon. Um, goes back out of the Man Sign here. And we're just going to kind of... I'm like, you know what? I'm not going down without a fight. I'm going to play for this W no matter what. I'm going to Pressure Stall. I'm going to Roost Stall. I'm going to Ice Beam. I'm going to do what I can because I'm like, this is so close. This is so close. I want it. I want it. So... Uh, he's revealed Roost, he's revealed Toxic, and he's revealed Scald. I'm assuming he's got Air Slash as his last move. So I was like, you know what? I can kind of pressure stall around his recovery. I can Ice Beam him. I can do stuff. I can get chip damage. I can hopefully do something. I was like, I'm not going down without a fight. So these last two turns are going to get, or these last couple turns are going to get pretty stally. Goes to the Toxic, he lands it. And I'm like, you know what? Still, I'm just going to Roost off this damage. I was like, I'm going to Roost off the Toxic damage. It's going to be fine. I'm going to stretch this out as long as I possibly can. Because I want this. I was like, we've gone, we've gone so good. I was like, we've done so good. I was like, I don't want that one 50-50 chance of me switching out versus him switching out to be a thing. So um, he is gonna roost off the damage. He got the toxic off, unfortunately. So now he can just scald me, go for the toxic and all that fun stuff. Um, unfortunately, it's a losing battle because I cannot freeze him due to scald. And in the coming turns, he's going to reveal the protect as well. So, yikes, there is seven more turns of this. So, um, like I said, I stretched it out for a while. So, he's going to reveal Protect here in a minute. He is going to be able to uh, Protect Toxic Stall me. It's a good set, actually, as far as what it's for, being a special defensive check to things like my Kyurem. Um, He told me after the fact that a spe specially defensive Mantine takes a Specs Draco Meteor a lot better than a Miltank does. So, that's why he ended up bringing Mantine over the Miltank. Um, there's the protect. Now he shows off that protect. So definitely, definitely a very solid match. Like I said, there are a few instances where I could have switched out depending on what he wanted to do. Um, getting rid of this Mantine a little bit earlier with, uh, with the Z bulk up and going for a knockoff on this thing or the Greninja or anything else really would have been awesome because then, uh, then Cobalion could have possibly set up on this thing instead of going for like Iron Heads or Close Combats or what have you. Would have been a lot better. Um, that 50-50 switch of me switching into Magneton versus him switching from Buzzwell into Mantine was also crucial. I think that was a huge turning point in the game, and I think that turn right there, despite everything else where we could have had a little bit in our favor, I'm still incredibly, incredibly grateful that the Magneton Zygarde roll worked the way it did. We ran Calx afterwards, and like I said, every every sort of RNG was in my favor for that turn. We lived on two, and we O-Code the Zygarde, so... Again, super incredibly thankful for that because otherwise not have. Um, also, we talked a little bit after the fact. Uh, Chris did not uh, remember that Cobalion was base 109. He thought it was a base 100. So he had set his Greninja to outpace or speed tie with base 100s, I suppose. And then I ended up outpacing him by one because I believe Cobalion's speed ended up at 168 and a max speed Jirachi ends up at 167. So... I believe his Greninja was set to 167 speed. I'll have to go back through the Team Builder and watch that after this recording. But um, I'm also super thankful for that. Otherwise, it wouldn't have been as close of a match as it had been. So um, definitely, definitely got a little lucky this week. Definitely got a little lucky. Um, I don't want to. I don't want to take for 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 granted the RNG that did play into this week's victory. Um, I'll fully own up to that. It's Pokemon. It's what happens. But uh, like I said, I've been talking over this entire time. You guys can see that I'm still trying to roost stall a Mantine um, and pressure stall him. So. Uh, the, all in all, it's a phenomenal match. Uh, a 0 1 or a 1 0 victory going to uh, Chris and the Tampa Bay Lux Rays. Fantastic match, fantastic battler. Make sure you go check him out. Like I said, his link will be in the description below, as well as if I didn't touch on a lot of our team building aspects. If you guys missed that, the link for that will be in the description down below as well. Um, all that being said, here, here, he is going to knock us out, and that is going to be the, uh, the 1 0 victory to Chris. Um, all that being said, I hope you guys have enjoyed. I'm having a lot of fun coming back in the GBA. 
Um, I look forward to how our how our season carries out. Next week we do have a divisional match, I believe, against Gym Leader Geo and the San Francisco Giantes, and that's going to be an awesome matchup. I cannot wait. Geo's a fantastic battle. He's a great guy too. I mean, like you just talk with Geo when you love him. But other than that, guys. Um, thank you guys for watching. If you have enjoyed, be sure to leave a like on the video. Let me know you guys are digging these GBA videos, as well as making sure you guys are subscribed so you don't miss out on future GBA content. Uh, covering all the team builders, covering all of the um, battles each and every week, every Sunday. And then also any free agent trade pickup stuff like that. Also check out the GBA channel will be in the description. Go, go follow them, show them the support, all that fun stuff. All that being said, I want to remind you guys to be great and do great. I'm going to let this outro bang. I'm going to talk to you guys soon. Later.